How are we traveling friends? Welcome back. I hope you guys are staying safe during these very strange times. So if you're anything like myself, you are probably sitting there absolutely addicted to the new Call of Duty Warzone. I've got a handful of tips here that have helped me come out on top. So hopefully they will help you do the same. If that sounds interesting, let's hop into it. So as most battle royales start, you are jumping out from an airplane of some description. And as you're flying down to your preferred location, you probably notice that when you pull the chute, you move incredibly slowly. Personally, what I found is that if you're sitting in the plane and you look at your desired target of where you want to land, you'll notice that it'll say a unit of measurement. I believe it's meters in this game. Now I found the sweet spot for myself to be around about 1,000 to 800 meters. Once you jump out of the plane, if you deploy your chute and then cut the chute, you'll probably notice your character going into a free fall animation. They'll fall much faster and a lot more farther as well. You can rinse and repeat that technique a couple of times. So cut the chute, redeploy, cut the chute, redeploy, and you will notice that you will get to your location a lot faster. It helps a ton, especially off the bat when you're looking for those first initial guns. That brings us nicely to our second point. As soon as you land, try and engage in as many contracts as possible. This is going to be a lifesaver. After one of these contracts, you can get a lot of money. I've got like six grand off one once because I was just collecting money as I was running towards completing the contract. So now you're probably asking me, Jar, with all this money that you're collecting, what is, the, what is the aim here? Well, my dear friend, I'm glad you asked. With this extra cash, I want you guys to be heading to a buy station as soon as possible. If you look on your map, it's there's an icon on there of a shopping cart. The best thing you can do here is you and your teammates combine your cash and go and buy a loadout drop immediately. So doing this at the beginning of the game will pretty much allow you to be running around with two legendary guns specific to your needs and your customization while the other teams are still running around with scars or M13s and already that is giving you a huge advantage. It will 100% allow you to be getting more kills. You'll be more confident in engaging enemies, especially at the beginning of the game, knowing that you're at an advantage. Now that brings us nicely to the next tip, and that is build a Warzone loadout. Remember, the Warzone loadout is going to be very different to your multiplayer loadout. The multiplayer is very fast, very intense, very hectic. It's just a completely different beast. Battle Royales play very different to regular multiplayer games. So build your class accordingly. Remember the map, Verdansk, I believe it's called. It's absolutely gigantic. So something that's going to help you in your long range gunfights, a sniper with a thermal scope. That is the best way to be moving forward. Why a thermal scope? Because at the moment, it's kind of broken. You can basically see through the entire map and it highlights enemies for you. Also, a big fan favorite is always going to be the M4. Also, the MP7 is getting a lot of spotlight at the moment as well. For those of you that don't know, the MP7 absolutely shreds armor very quickly. An extra little side tip, building off of your Warzone loadout. Now, with your guns, especially ARs, I 100% recommend that you should always be running an AR and then keep your secondary as either the long range engagement or the very short close range engagement, right? If you can get comfortable with the iron sights of your weapon, that is going to be massive. It opens up another slot of customization for you to increase the range or the damage of your gun or the accuracy. However, if you were missing your shots completely, none of that extra juice matters. If you feel as though you need a scope or an optic, then by all means use it. At the end of the day, this is a game about guns. You gotta hit your shot. If you can hit your shots with the iron sights, trust me, you will be rewarded with that extra customization. I mean, it just feels like you got that home court advantage when you know exactly how your guns fire, the recoil patterns, you know it all because you've customized it to you. Okay, so now you've got your custom loadout, you're out there, you're slaying bodies, you're having a great time. But what else is actually helpful from the buying station? that can be assisting you and your team in getting more wins. Armor plates right now are crucial. You get five for like 1500, I think. Dude, that is fantastic. Make sure you're always buying armor bundles. Make sure you're always buying UAVs. UAVs are incredible for late game, especially when you've got a handful of teams, you're rotating in on those final small circles and you can just see perfectly where they're all coming from with the red dots. Don't sleep on the UAVs. A quick little extra tip here. If you and your teammates are all coordinating with headsets separately buy UAVs 
activate at the same time and your UAV will cover damn near the whole map. It's absolutely insane. Also, self-revive kits are an absolute must, especially with the solos game mode coming out. Do yourself a favor, avoid getting one-tapped, buy yourself a self-revive kit, you will thank yourself in the future, I promise. Bonus tip here is when you have a self-revive kit and your teammates are around but they can't get to you just yet, pop the self-revive up to about 75 to 80% and then when your teammate comes gets you, with that extra 25-20%, he'll be able to pick you up really, really fast. So you're not wasting anyone's time. Alright, so this is more geared towards console players. I don't know what it is about this game. When I play Warzone, it just feels really clunky. There's two settings that I would want you to change if you don't mind. Obviously, if you're more comfortable with your existing settings, then don't worry about it. Let it chill. But I've noticed that when I changed these two settings, I felt much better in-game. In your settings, go to general. In general, you will see that you can change your map from a circle to a square. It actually gives you more information to be able to see. It's a bigger mini map. It'll most certainly help you out. The second thing I want you to change is going down and turning on contextual tap. Instead of having to hold down square, like for me to interact and pick up different weapons, I use square. So for me, instead of having to hold it down, all I have to do is tap it once and it, it'll open chests and change weapons fast. And I feel as though it's allowing me to move a lot faster and be a lot faster and a lot smoother. Most likely likely you're going to die at some stage of your warzone career. So this brings us to the gulag and goddamn do I love the gulag bro. There's no other place that gets your blood pumping the way the gulag does. So when you die you're going to be taken to the gulag however it is only open until the last five circle rotation. Now the gulag is just down to pure movement and gun skill. There's no fluffing about over here. Make sure you're listening to footsteps. Make sure you're pre-aiming all of your corners, all of your angles. If you're finding the gulag really tough, you seem to just not be able to win. For those of you that own the game, I would highly recommend going into gunfight. Practice as much as you can in gunfight. It will make you better. You'll get used to what players like to do. You'll get used to the movement, the intensity. You'll get used to moving around with very little health. And before you know it, you'll be in the gulag being able to predict your enemy's movements and getting the jump on them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are spectating any of your teammates throw rocks at your enemies, goddamn, that is annoying and it's distracting. So many times I have mistaken rock throws as enemy footsteps and then I get bodied. And it is so frustrating. Make sure you're calling out to your teammates as well. Let them know they're on your left, they're on your right, they're in the middle, they're capping the zone. Give your teammates as much information as possible to let them get out on top. Last but not least, this applies to goddamn every single battle royale you've ever played. With the time to kill being so fast in this game, and there's no head armor here, there's only body armor, there is no helmets, nothing. High ground in this game is ridiculous ridiculously overpowered. Pairing high ground with a thermal sniper, it's such a huge advantage. It is so frustrating to get killed in that situation. <laughs> if you're the one doing the killing, it's not that bad. There are buildings in this game which are literally 15 stories high. People are just gonna get exhausted at how high you are just by looking at you, bro. It's going to be very hard to flank you when you are 15 stories high and the only way to get up is to take the stairs. If you've got time to run up 15 flights of stairs just to flank one person, you need to reevaluate your life decisions, my friend. It ain't worth it, dude. It ain't worth it. Just keep running. <laughs> keep running to the zone, bro. I I'm not too sure why, but maybe it's because we played so much multiplayer, but in Warzone, Nobody tends to look up when they're getting shot. Everyone kind of just scans maybe the first, the ground floor and maybe a window or two up, but no one is really looking at rooftop. So please do yourself a favor, grab a sniper, get onto the top floor and just kick off. You'll have an absolute frenzy out there. You're gonna have a lot of fun. Alrighty friends, that's all I've got so far. Please leave a comment down below. If you guys have any tips, we would love for you to share them. And as always, cheers friends. We'll catch you in the next one.